This video will guide you through the recommended steps of installation for Will Seal FRV pre-compressed fire rated vertical expansion seal into an open joint. Job site conditions can vary and may require deviation from the standard installation instructions. Contact your local Trimco CPG or Will Seal technical sales representative for support. At the beginning of every job, it's very important to have all the tools necessary for a successful and efficient installation. You will need two 2-inch two margin trowels, clean lint-free rags, IPA isopropyl alcohol, acetone, 3-inch masking or duct tape, quarter-inch masking tape, a caulking gun, a tape measure, utility knife, long serrated bread knife, a 3 inch jiffy mixer and power drill, clean bucket. The accessories provided with the Will Seal fire rated vertical sticks are weather bead sealant, fire rated joint splice adhesive two-part epoxy, and of course, Will Seal's FRV foam sticks. Before we start, a word of caution. It's very important not to open any sticks until you're ready to install. Once the shrink wrapping is removed, the stick will start to expand. If the foam strip is opened early, the installation of the foam stick can be difficult. Temperature, humidity, storage temperature, and direct sun exposure play a key role in the expansion time of the pre-compressed foam. For better handling in warm weather, store in a cool place up to 24 hours prior to the installation to slow the expansion down. Average expansion time is approximately 2 to 5 minutes, depending on environmental and pre-installation storage conditions. Products kept in a warm area and exposed to sun will expand faster than products stored in a cool, shaded area. Preparation Before you begin, preparation is key to a successful installation. Substrates should be sound, clean, dry, and free of dirt, oils, and debris. Using IPA and a clean, lint-free rag, wipe the joint walls clean. Following the IPA-soaked rag, use a dry, lint-free rag to dry the substrate. Check for cracks leading into the joint and repair spalls. Consult a structural engineer for areas of concern. Using the 3-inch tape, apply it to the surface up along the joint and up to the joint edge. This will keep the area along the joint clean in case of drips during the installation of the epoxy in the joint. In addition to the tape on the surface of the deck, we recommend using quarter-inch tape on the inside of the joint, butting up to the top edge to keep the area clean when installing the epoxy. This will be important for the installation of the weather bead and necessary to achieve a strong bond to the concrete. Confirm joint gap size every 6 to 7 feet for the entire length of the joint prior to installation. Sticks must be ordered in quarter-inch increments of the mean joint size in order to fit properly. Stage each stick alongside the expansion joint, taking care that the proper sizes are in the right location. Remember, do not cut into the shrink wrapping until you are ready to install into the joint. Next, epoxy preparation. Following the epoxy mixing instructions, pour equal parts of A and B into a clean bucket. Using 3-inch jiffy mixer and power drill, mix epoxy as instructed. Apply a 16th of an inch to 8th of an inch coating of the supplied epoxy with a 2-inch trowel to both joint sidewalls along the full run of the 6.5-foot stick, extending an additional 2 to 3 inches past where the next installed stick will extend to. This ensures the stick is adhered in place along the full run and that there is minimal potential for the epoxy to cure before the next stick is installed. Working time on epoxy is 10 to 15 minutes. Remove the quarter inch tape from the inside of the joint for the length of the first stick. If the epoxy hardens on the surface of the substrate before installation, another coat of epoxy can be applied within two hours. After two hours, the substrate surface must be abraded to eliminate the amine blush that occurs during the final cure. 
Prepare Will Seal Fire Rated Vertical Stick Number 1 at the installation site. Remove the outer shrink wrapping that is holding the foam material in compression by cutting along the face of the compression board. Take care to not cut into the silicone face. Once the joint material is out of compression, it will begin to expand. Remove the compression boards and release film immediately. Thoroughly butter the butt ends of the stick with a supplied splice adhesive. Install the stick starting at the beginning of the joint, working the foam into the joint. Firmly push the end of the stick against the terminating wall to ensure complete wetting of the surface is achieved. At the end of the installation of the first stick, leave the far end hunched out of the joint. This will be in preparation for the installation of the second stick. As needed, hunch the newly installed stick upwards to allow the ends to expand out completely. This is critically important for performance. Recess the stick a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch below the surface of the concrete deck. Apply epoxy and remove the quarter inch tape as previously stated in steps six and seven. Install the next stick into the joint, starting from the far end, approximately half an inch to one inch short of 6.5 feet, the length of a full stick. The overlap will allow for compressive force at the joint splice. As needed, apply pressure to insert the stick by pushing with both hands on the outside walls of the stick evenly, working your way from one end of the stick to the other. Ensure that the newly installed stick does not bunch up on the stick installed previously at the splice. As needed, hunch the newly installed stick upwards to allow corners to expand out completely. This is critically important for performance. When pushing the hunched butt ends together into the joint, apply even pressure to both sides as it moves into the joint, providing even compression. Recess a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. Continue steps until the joint is complete. Note, the last stick will need both butt ends buttered. The last stick should be longer by half an inch on both sides to provide sufficient compression against the previous stick and the terminating wall. Firmly push the end of the stick against the terminating wall into the joint at surface level to ensure complete wetting out of the substrate is achieved. Run a quarter inch bead of the supplied silicone along both sides of the joint where the foam stick meets the joint wall. This will assist in creating a weathertight seal. Tool each bead to form a smooth, concave cant bead on each side of the joint. Run a small bead of the supplied silicone splice sealant over and just under the surface of the cured sealant in all butt joint seams and transitions. Tool all butt joints and transitions, ensuring the sealant has adequately wetted out the surface of the sticks and filled any voids in the splice. This also creates a clean, aesthetic finish. Note, it's important to check to make sure the bellows line up at the butt joints and the butt joint sealant and seam sealant has not glued the bellows together. It is important so the bellows expand and contract independently and are necessary for the joint to function properly. Be sure to remove any excess adhesive material left on the surface of the material substrate. Do not allow the excess adhesives to cure. Finally, remove masking tape from the sides of the joint. If you have any specific questions, please contact your local Will Seal sales or technical representative. Happy sealing!